Hi, I'm Sarah from Heirloom Creations, and our spider web ruler is our ruler of the month. Now, this particular ruler, slightly different than other kaleidoscope like rulers, has some extra lines on here to create extra background pieces. You can cut a variety of different ones depending on how you want those eight shapes to come together. So, yes, this is a 45 degree angle in this. Uh, triangular. Um, you'll notice here I've actually used striped fabric. That one was this beautiful batik. And I love striped fabric that is not even because if it was even then I'd have to match up the stripes. So a little funky makes it even easier to work with. Here's another one that I was playing with as we were working with a spider web that is a floating spider web. And we're going to show you how this ruler will cut these funky shaped backgrounds that fill in that octagon. Another thing with the regular kaleidoscope uh, design and layout, you add four corners, four triangles to the corners to create that actual shape. And the one that's on the wall here has a kite shape. Four kites make up this black uh, star that is in the middle, and that one is called a four-pointed star. And depending on how you change up the colors, for example, if we had put the colors where the black star is and use this area to be a lighter, more subdued background color, that is going to give you a whole nother look. So it just depends on how you play with your colors, but this ruler will do from sizes three inch all the way up to the 10 inch size of strips. Now, if you don't want to do stripes, but you want a little variety, all you need to do is stripe some of your fabrics and kind of make a strata that you'll cut your pieces from. Let's get started and I'll show you all three cuts that this ruler will do. There's a variety of patterns available for this particular ruler. We have on our website the Winding Road Table Runner. And it's, these are just very inexpensive patterns. They're just a two-sided page. And then this one is a vertigo. And this will give you more of a kaleidoscope type finish. Also a table runner finishing up 21 by 47 inches long. Now let's take a look at one of these blocks. Now you saw this pretty quilt hanging up on the wall. But what you probably didn't see was where the block actually is. So what I'm going to do is show you how we cut the triangles and the kites next. So we're going to start off by using the striped fabric. That's going to be pretty easy here. We're also going to identify the parts of the ruler that you're going to be using. For example, this stripe is cut four and a half inches wide. So you're going to find the line that says four and a half inches across the ruler. And you'll notice you have that little sticky nut point. That black part does stick above your fabric and we're going to go ahead and start to cut. So we're cutting two at a time here. After you cut one, then you're just going to go ahead and rotate your ruler so you get all those shapes right on down the entire strip of fabric. This would be where if you wanted to stripe your fabric or strip it, you could do different widths. You could do one like this much and then a small one and then a bigger one. You can have some great variation. Great way to use up fabric because it, because it does turn into a great scrappy quilt. Okay, so what we've got is the start of our blocks here. We'll turn some of those over since those batiks do have kind of a right and wrong side. You're going to need eight of them total to kind of get around, but because the block that we're working with, you actually only need four per block. So let's go ahead and take a look. Now what I want to focus on is the part of the ruler that's listed. There's some other numbers here and these angles that come down to the center point. So we were working with the four and a half inch line. The four and a half inch line has a number right below it. It says four. That magic number is the size of square you need to cut for your kites. So what we're going to do is we're going to lay down the square. Got two, let's do a couple at a time here. Got a four inch square and we're going to line up the white line with the corner of that square. Now notice you will have a little bit of extra up here. So just run your rotary cutter right on up and because those are uh, the non-stick rulers, you will not have any slippage up here, which is nice. Okay, so then we've got our triangles here started. So we can go ahead and do our kite. And you can start to see the shape of it coming together here. Nope, sorry. 
I always do that. They kind of look a little funky, but we're putting the ends there. There's our half of a try or half of our square and there's our other half. So then you're going to just go ahead and sew your three pieces together here and then your three pieces together here and there's your square. Then you have all these wonderful blocks to lay out and find the pattern and layout that you're after. Next, let's go ahead and talk about how we cut the backgrounds for the floating spider web and for the kaleidoscope. For the kaleidoscope block, we're going to do the same similar technique where we have cut these triangles to, from a four and a half inch strip. We're going to look down to the number right below that, which says four. We're going to cut four inch squares and we're going to just cut them in half. So you don't need anything special, just a straight edge and rotary cut from corner to corner. And these half square triangles will be oversized but will be perfect for the four corners that need to go in here. Once you have them stitched onto your pieces, then you're just gonna use a ruler and finish squaring it up. And that's how you get the kaleidoscope blocks. Now, the other way that we can do it, now this is ingenious. Okay, so we're gonna slide this off to the side and we're going to do what we call the floating spider web. Probably the most fun discovery that I had with this particular block. So once again, back to our ruler. Now you have to do just a little bit of math. Find back where your four and a half inch line is, take the number that's below the four and a half mark, which is four, and double it. Cut your blocks that you will need for the backgrounds eight inches. Now, when we take our blocks, there's eight inches. I've got two of them here. I'm going to cut them corner to corner. Now, go ahead and um, you'll have the different, you know, if you have a fabric that's got a right and wrong side, just go ahead and layer them up. You can put some right sides together. You can put them right sides up. It won't matter because we're going to make sure we get all the pieces that we need because we need rights and lefts. So watch this. So we're going to go ahead corner to corner, cut that. This is what you need to do. You're going to take this piece and flip it over. By doing this, we make sure that we're going to get half one direction and half the other direction. Now, now this part is what we're going to cut almost like a kite from once again. Line up this, the line that we used for the kites and go ahead and slice off one side. These are your background pieces. Now, this is waste, but do you notice what it is? It is that angle, the 45 degree triangle that we cut from earlier. So save those, you can use them another time. So now when we lay these out, we're gonna have our pieces coming together. So we will, that's where we need that right and a left. And there's one block. And then we'll go ahead and do the other one. Oh. And there's your next block. And then you're just gonna sew your blocks together and keep on going. Do you see it coming apart? I love it. So fun to do here. So I actually had some fun. Being a spider web ruler, I kind of thought a little bit uh, Halloween-ish. And I tend to have a little fun and with some oranges, I had this spider pin in my jewelry box. I, I used to wear it many years ago, not so appropriate these days, but it needed its own little place to hang out. So what I did was I took some orange fabrics and I striped them, but when I cut those triangles out, I kind of cut them a little wonky. Now once I was done and I went ahead and added on those nice big background pieces that we just cut, I could trim that up to the size that I needed to be. So remember, everything's kind of oversized and then you've got that ability to make everything square at the end. So the spider web ruler is available on our website along with these patterns at heirloomcreations.net.